Hi, this is Jimmy with The Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to be taking you through how to use Notion on your iPad. Now, Notion is great when you're on a desktop or using the web client, but what if you're on the go or you just want to use your iPad, but you want to maintain your same level of productivity in Notion as when you use the desktop or the web? Well, this is what this video is all about. I'm going to teach you everything you need to know how to maximize your time on the iPad when using Notion, so stay tuned. Okay, so as you can see, uh, from my screen here, I have um, a page here in Notion, Notion for iPad test. And the basic purpose of this page is basically to hold everything that we're going to test out here. Also, I'm going to hit enter, drop down into my page here. Um, I apologize for you not being able to see my face. I normally have like a picture in picture of myself, but for whatever reason, my iMac's not letting me do that. It's really not letting me capture both in screen flow so i'm actually using quicktime to record this video so that's why it's a little different so my apologies so the first thing we want to do is create a new page right i want to create a sub page so how do you create a page in notion for ipad well there's two ways there's the traditional way which you use on the desktop which is the slash page as you can see the page shows up in the um in the block section and i just press that and that creates a new sub page. I'll say page, oh, test page one, hit enter. And that's in there. I'll say this is test page one. And enter that. And then uh, to go back, I can either hit the back arrow up here and on the top, or I can just hit the breadcrumb for Notion for iPad test. That's the name of my page. I can click that. That's normally a little easier. And that works very much like the one on the uh, desktop and web client. So that's my test page. The other thing I can do is I can click in the body here. And rather than type the slash, I can press this plus button on the lower left corner that's um, on this little black bar down here with the plus with the drop down. And that's the block button. If I press that, that brings up the block menu. And I can go to page. As you see, it's the second entry. Hit page. It does the same exact thing. It brings me to my sub page and I can say page two and go back and now I have two pages right if I, notice it has empty text here if I go back into page two and I put in some text this is some text and go back now it shows a page that's not empty it's not an empty page it has content in it so that's a little cool thing that notion does with the icons just a little interesting fun fact so Let's say for this main page, I wanted to add an icon. So I press that add an icon button and it gives me a random icon, which is that curling. I think that is, I don't know. It's the, I know it's not a ball. I don't know what it is. If you know what it is, write it in the comments. You can press on that and change it by pressing it. And you just come down here and filter. And let's say I want a um, school and cause we're learning, right? This is a tutorial. I see a red backpack. I'll choose that. And now I have a red backpack. Let's say I want to add a cover to make my page look a little, a little better. Well, just like in the desktop version and the web version of this, I just press the add cover button. And it gives me a, from a, the existing um, gallery, museum gallery stuff and NASA stuff and gradients, it gives me a random image. If I want to change it, I hit the change cover button, which you can see on the right hand side here. I hit that, it brings up the page cover picker, which is just like the one on desktop and web. I have a gallery option, and that's going to be me the colors, gradients, the museums, and the NASA photos. As I scroll, if I scroll down here, I see from the various museums. I have those options. I also have the NASA pictures, and I have the colors and gradients. So, but let's say I can upload by clicking the upload tab and choose an image. It has to be wired at 150. Uh, 1500 pixels uh, to, for ideal. You can link to an image. So basically post an image, uh, a URL that points directly to an image and do that. And lastly, the option I'm going to choose is unsplash. I'm going to type in, because this is for iPad, I'm going to type in iPad and I'm going to look for a nice iPad picture. Um, I'm going to choose this one. Not bad, it's an iPad. So the one thing you can't do here that you can do in the desktop client is reposition the image. You can't reposition this iPad image. You can't move it up and down to get to crop it the way you want. 
You can do that in the desktop client. You can't do it in the iOS client. So just a little difference there. Let's say you wanted to create a um, page, like a comment uh, thread f for the page itself, for the whole page in its entirety. So I might say using Notion for iPad is fun. Explanation point, hit the send button. That's a that's a, a comment that's gonna that appears at the top of the page and it supposed to represent the page as a whole. But let's say I wanted to create a comment that's just for the line that I'm currently on. So here I can just hit come down to the bottom. You see this little at symbol. I see that the at symbol, the little um the one next to it, the uh, comment, the, the 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 voice bubble one. So I'm gonna press that one, and that gives me a, the comments. I can say inline comments are awesome. I have no one what to say. Hit enter or press the send button if you're not using a keyboard. And as you can see, I have a little icon down here. If I press that icon, if I press that icon, it brings up my inline comment. If I go to another, and the reason why inline comments are cool is because if you go to the next line, if I come down here somewhere and I say, and I press the bubble again and say another inline comment, enter, because that didn't work the way I wanted it to. If I come in here, try this again, inline comment. That's what I wanted to show you. So each line gets its own comment. So this one's inline comment, the one underneath it, another inline comment. So think of it as like a revision tool if you're working on a team. Or if you just want to make a note to yourself for something that's on that line, you can create that little comment and do that. If you come down underneath that, let's say I wanted to put in some headings, right? So let's say I want to make a heading. So there's a couple ways I can do that. I can do the traditional way, just the slash heading. I'm going to spell heading. And then pick heading one. And then type in title. That's the traditional way. And I can do the same thing for heading, you know, type slash heading and then pick two or three. But I can also hit the plus button scroll a little bit to my headings and let's say I want to put a heading two in I can just press that and say this is heading two heading two and the third way you can change something to a heading is let's say I have some text like um, random text that I have is like paragraph text um, traditional text no, no big deal right you can use the transform option which is the turn into button down at the bottom here um, so I'm going to show it right here if I press that and let go it brings up this is the transformation option. I can take that text and turn it into any one of these things. So let's say I want to turn it into a heading three. I press heading three, and as you can see now, that random text is a heading three. So pretty straightforward on what you want to do. So let's create a new page here. I'm going to hit plus page, and I'll call this more examples of Notion functionality. Okay just to keep it clean. So <laughs> it makes it a little easier for me. Um, so we just covered all that stuff. So let's say we wanted to create a list. So there's several different ways you can do this in Notion for iOS and for iPad. First of all, remember, if you don't know this, Notion supports Markdown. So you can simply write this in Markdown. So if you have a keyboard, the quickest way you can be able to generate a list is by using just hold down shift, create the asterisk, push a space, and guess what? Now I've started a list to do um, to do one, right? Enter, to do two, enter, I hit enter again, and I'm added a list. Pretty straightforward. If I want to create a numbered list, much like in Markdown, hit one plus space and announce the list. I say item one, item two, and then I'll say enter twice to get out of that. Pretty straightforward. But there's another way I can create these lists. I can hit the plus button. So I hit that plus, the block button, which is that plus button down at the bottom here. Bring up my blocks, scroll a little bit, and I have bulleted list. I can check that. I can press that, excuse me. And then I can say task one, task two. But let's say I wanted to, I come down here, and I want to make a sub bullet of task two. There's a couple ways to do it, depending on if you have a keyboard or not. If you have a keyboard, just press tab 
and if you want to go back if, to go to, to indent one level if you want to go back one level you hold down shift and press tab but if you don't have a keyboard look down at this the black bar again and you'll see about midway through the bar there's an arrow pointing right to a line that is the indent one level button so when you press that button it indents one and I can say sub task one all right and hit enter. now let's say I want to go back out and create task three well if you notice now at that black bar before the left arrow the arrow that's pointing left to the line was grayed out but now it's not so if I press that it goes back and grays itself out as you see now it's grayed out if I press it to the right it goes in and it's no longer grayed out I'm going to press it back again and then I'm going to hit enter and I'm done with this list and that works for all the lists so if you hit the you know the block button and you can choose the numbered lists I'll show you that real quick here you got numbered lists you got your toggle list as well if I want to add a divider there's two ways to do that so let's say I want to add a divider it's type slash div and it gives me the divider I'll press it and now you see that you get that little line that's good for breaking up sections on a page you can also come down here I'll type divider I'll type down divider here enter and let's put another divider in by hitting the plus button scrolling down to see divider and pressing that and now I put a divider another divider on the page so most things you can do with the slash you can do with the plus right it's, they're, they're interchangeable it just depends on whether or not you have a keyboard or not which way is going to be faster for you I'm trying to think what else I can add here let's hit the plus button again come down you can do to do's so you can create a to-do list by just pressing the to-do button and you say to do one to do two hit enter twice and the way you mark them off is by just pressing the box if you want to mark it off with your finger off press it again it comes back on I'll do to do two same thing press it on you can also come down here if you are on a keyboard it might be quicker to just wait slash to do and then hit the to do button and say to do three to do four and then mark off one of these if you want by pressing the box pretty straightforward there right pretty easy to do let's get into some of the more advanced blocks let's talk about databases on how to create a database well there's a traditional way if you have a keyboard which is slash table and then select which one you want so that's one way of doing it I'm going to delete that though because you're right that's if you have a keyboard if, but a lot of times if you're on an iPad you might not have a keyboard you might not be using a keyboard in that moment so the next thing you might want to do instead is hit that plus button just scroll to database and select ta the table we want we're going to choose an inline table scroll up a little bit here so you can see it on my screen and we're going to give our table on this table I say, wait, I say iPad table <laughs> that way I can pick it out really easy and I'll say and then when you come in here I click the under what it is the rows it brings me to that page because remember each row in a table in Notion is a page and it brings me to the page so I can sit there and say uh, first item in table all right and I can give it a tag and let's say I want to make, say this is the first I create a tag called first I think first is, it gives me an option down here to create select that option so I'll press that to say yes I want to do that now you can see it kind of becomes a tag I hit done to assign it and there it is I go back using the breadcrumbs to my table I'm gonna say another item and I'll type this one I'll create another label it's called another add that one and done I'll go back and I'm gonna create one more third item but I'm gonna give it the tag of first and you'll see why in a minute so when I go back as you can see I have my table it works pretty good so now I'm going to go back to my page and now you can see my tables there it has all my data another thing you could do and I have a video on how to do this in detail is create a link database which is basically a custom view of your existing tables so that's one of the most powerful things of Notion is their database capability it's a rich capability database capability you can really track a lot of different things and view that data in a lot of different ways 
once you learn filtering and linked databases. I have a video, the link it above. It covers everything you need to know. It starts you assuming you don't know anything about tables and databases. And by the, in Notion, by the end, you'll be creating your own databases and linked views like crazy. So recommend you watch that video, but I'm gonna give you a quick tutorial here just so you see how to do it in iPad, on the iPad. What you can do is click the plus button, scroll down to create link database. It's towards the bottom of the database section. Press it, press it. And then it's gonna ask you for what database you want. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says iPad table, because that's the one I just created. I'm gonna press that. Oh, I pressed the wrong one, didn't I? Yes, I want to delete this. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna come down here, hit the plus button. When you do these demos, sometimes they don't work exactly the way you want. Create link database, and then I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom here, and I'm gonna click iPad table, and there, I got the right one. I have fat fingers, and so sometimes I hit the wrong thing. Um, so as you can see, it's a direct copy of the original table. They're just out of order, uh, slightly. Um, but one of the things I can do, let's say I, in this link database, I only wanna see the ones that are marked another with the, the tag another. So I can come here to this ellipses and press that. Go to filter. Go to filter and press that. Hit add a filter. And then I have a filter criteria. Now, if you've used filters before in Notion, it looks slightly different, obviously, because it's a iPad, iOS, touchscreen versus Mac OS or Windows or the web. But it's basically the same concepts. Uh, there's nothing really different here. It's just arranged differently. So the first thing is the thing that you want to key on, in which case I'm going to press, which by default is name, but if I press it, it'll bring me up to my properties. And I'll say tags. And then I have a couple options here in the middle, which is sort of like the criteria. Contains, does not contain, is empty or is not empty. I'm going to say contains because I want to filter on the another. And then because it knows I'm looking for tags, it's going to, when I click select an option, it's going to show me my tags, which is first and another. I'm going to select another. And then you have to click the done button to apply it. And as you can see down here, only the item that, only the pages that have another tag, the tag another is showing up in this table. And the reason, and another difference, the way you can tell between a database and a linked database is the linked database is always going to have that little arrow in front of its name. That's the, that little arrow is pointing to the upper right hand corner. That's telling you that it's literally this view is pointing to the iPad table or to whatever name of your table there is. So that sort of, whenever you see that, you know it's not an actual database, it's a reference to an existing database that's lightly filtered. So the reason why you use linked databases is because then you can replicate that data without having to rebuild that database or replicate the database itself because all these things don't actually hold data. They're referencing data in that original table. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you like this video, again, as I explained earlier, please click that like button. It really does help me out. If you like these tutorials, want to see more of them, want to be notified when I receive these videos, um, do these tutorials. I do tutorials on no a lot of tutorials on Notion. You should check out my playlist. If you check out my uh, channel page, you'll see my playlist. I have a ton of videos in there and I'm constantly adding. I love Notion. It's one of my favorite apps. But if you like Evernote or Todoist or some other of the applications out there, you know, the Google Docs Suite as an example, you know, check my channel out. I'm doing videos on those as well. Um, I'm constantly adding videos. I do at least one a week, sometimes two a week. I'm trying to get to two a week, so we'll see what happens. Click subscribe, and if you want to be notified when I release new videos, please click the bell. Thanks.